Hello YouTube, my name is Ali and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing some CTF uh, tips and tricks, so tools that you can use uh, and that you should be familiar with when you're participating in CTFs. So I've got a little list here and we're just going to go through a few of them. The first basic one is strings. Uh, if you've not heard of strings, um, nope, not that one, strings. It uh, prints all the sequences of printable characters, i.e. strings, that are in a file. So if we were to say uh, um, go into Pico CTF and go into General Skills and CD strings, what's uh okay? Well, whatever. We're going to going to flag shop and we're just gonna strings on um, no that's not uh, we're gonna go into binary exploitation and we're going to CD into uh, slippery shell code and we're going to strings on volm and when we run this, we can see we get a lot, a lot, a lot of different little strings. So these are all, uh, basically they're symbols that will be used in the executable so that if you're debugging, you know exactly what everything is. And so that the process knows where it crashes. Strings is a very simple command. It literally just gets all the strings in a file. Next, we're going to have a look at grep. So grep is if we have a look at the man pages uh, very 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 useful it searches for patterns in a file or whatever you give to it so these patterns uh, can be separated by new line characters or um, yeah they're separated by new line characters and it will search for uh, any line with that input but it also has another piece of functionality if you use minus e it uses regular expressions so you can search for exact patterns rather than um, just looking for a certain line so when you're searching for a flag you can actually use the regular expression so i've got a load of files in here and i'm just going to cat start and we see we get lots and lots of output but if what we do is we pipe that into grep and we do tac e for amctf because that's what I've actually got my flag set up to be and we do dot star uh, that should have got us something but I think Still not working. Wow. Uh, cat flag. Oh, it is a Pico CTF one. So this one, because I'm in the solved one, uh, if we search for Pico CTF dot star and lowercase e, we can see it just gives us the flag. Whereas if we were to search just for Pico CTF, It would still probably do it, but if it's embedded somewhere in the middle of something like this, you don't really want to mess around with that. The next tool we're going to move on to is something called binwalk. If you haven't heard of this, it is a tool for searching binary images and uh, other files for embedded files. So whenever you're extracting stuff, there'll be magic bytes and this uh, tool will basically look through the magic bytes so if I was to go into um, CD hack the box CD um, no challenges uh, it's in I think stay So we're going to go into DaVinci. I'm not going to give anything away. 
but if we have a look at uh, binwalk Mona Lisa dot JPEG, we can see that it's a JPEG image, but it also has uh, zip archives inside of it. So what we can actually do is if we do binwalk tag E to extract um, and then Mona Lisa dot JPEG we can see failed to run external extractor no such file but it did actually work so it got us the contents of the extracted folder now I'm not going to go in there because uh, that'll probably give away some of the challenge and I don't want to be penalized for that but as an example that's what binwalk does it looks for files inside of files and instead of having to go through them manually you can very easily just get those files next we're going to have a look at a tool called exif tool uh, and if you haven't heard of it it is a great tool it's used for reading the metadata uh, generally in images or other files so you can read the pause and read the description it supports a lot a lot of, a lot of different files um, but if we were to go into uh, exif tool on Mona Lisa .jpeg, we can see a few different things such as Huffman encoding um, other so gdjpeg that's probably uh, a piece of software we can have a look at plans.jpeg as well and we can see that again you get lots of data but for stuff like video you can use it to extract embedded GPS data which is the most useful thing I think um, and yeah that's about it the next tool we're going to look at is called Stegsolve um, do I have Stegsolve? I do have Stegsolve so Stegsolve is a steganography um, tool for images so if I just open Mona Lisa .jpeg, we can see that it's just an image. But if I go through, so I'm just hitting the arrow keys, and I can hit these keys down here, and it does exactly the same. But basically, this tool will go through different image filters. So if someone's like sneakily put some thing in the least significant bit like has probably been done here uh, then you would be able to see that and so it's often it's like text or something that's just very subtly in there um, and you can use this to sort of go through and find those um, something that's like hidden in plain sight basically it's a great tool um, you can download it. It's a Java file, so it's a little bit harder to set up, but once you've got it set up, it works perfectly. Next, we're going to move on to GDB Pader. So I'm actually going to bring in another tab down here. You're going to work? Yes, you are. So I've, if I run GDB, I've just got plain GDB here but I want to install Pader, so you can basically follow these instructions here I'm just going to do that and done, and now if we run GDB we can see we have a new prompt and GDB Pader has a few really really useful tools, if I have a look here you can see let's move you across it has ROP gadgets built in, reading ELF, uh, you can see process information such as memory mapping, you can dump the process memory, you can generate shellcode or skeleton exploits, uh, there's loads more stuff you can do. Uh, the pattern is one of the most useful when you're um, generating uh, stack overflow, uh, you can use the pattern to identify whereabouts in a string uh, the instruction pointer or whatever you're trying to overwrite is and 
yeah, it's really useful for that kind of stuff. So get to know it. The last one we're going to look at is Cyberchef, which is by GCHQ, which um, I can't remember what they actually stands for, but what else does it stand for? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Government Communication Headquarters. There we go. So it is a really useful tool for um, if you've got some basic, let's just make some base64, say hello world, we're going to copy that and we can see that it's already saying from base64 we'll produce hello world. So it basically detects in the output box what something is. So if we stop you, we can see it's saying unbase64 and it'll be plain text. And it's a great tool for this kind of stuff because it has a huge amount of stuff in here like each of these you can extract zip files everything it's amazing and i really recommend you get to know it because it is just really useful and i use it all the time um and i know i said that was the last thing but finally the best thing you can do uh in a ctf is be familiar with your system if you're using Windows, learn all the commands you can use, like ls, oh, in Windows it would be dir minus capital A, I think, or slash capital A. But on Linux it's ls tac la, and that'll list absolutely everything. Um, and so you can do that, and if I go into CTFs, uh, I don't even know, you can... Basically, just learn all the commands for your uh, system, and yeah, that's probably the best thing you can do. Be familiar with using a terminal, because it's something you're going to have to get familiar with if you want to get into security. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, share the video, subscribe, leave some feedback in the comments for me below, and I will uh, get back to you uh, as soon as I can. Again, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.